Hello and welcome to Classic Performance and today we've got an update on the C5 Corvette project where we're kind of bringing it back to life from a very, very long term storage. Uh, we've got everything done on the car. It's ready to hit the road. We're going to take our first road trip in the car, a day long road trip up to Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, what we've had to do to get this car ready, you've seen some of the things we've done. We've also changed the water pump. Uh, and, and thermostat housing, put a new thermostat in it. The water pump had a little bit of seepage off the bottom of it when I wasn't expecting it under the changing the oil and the fuel filter and so forth. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and put a new water pump on it. It came with the uh, with the pulley, which is very nice. Didn't have to change that pulley, as you can see in this picture here. And then also the radiator, changed the radiator on the upper elbow where the upper radiator hose goes. There was a little bit of seepage there too. It's plastic. It was cracked. So put a new radiator in it. And when I took everything out, uh, you can see the radiator between the uh, uh, the AC coil in the front and the radiator itself packed with grass. So we got all that obviously cleaned out with the new radiator, but you can see how stuff gets trapped up in there over time because these cars pull air in from the bottom. Uh, so anyway, this will improve our cooling tremendously, uh, make the car much more reliable with a new water pump. A 22-year-old 22, 22 radiator water pump, you should change them anyway. They're very inexpensive. Wasn't that difficult to do. Put a uh, Goodyear gator back belt on it. These things are known to kind of squeak when it's damp out. Uh, so we put a new gator back belt on it. And uh, we'll get our tires on here in a minute. And we'll be ready to go tomorrow. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up and make a trip to Charlotte, North Carolina. I've got a couple of appointments up there. And we're going to make a special stop off. If you like racing, uh, NASCAR racing, uh, automotive history, and even if you know the name Rick Hendrick, you're going to want to stick with us and see where we go and take a tour in Charlotte, North Carolina. And then we'll make our loop back around at the end of the day uh, and see just what kind of fuel economy a C5 Corvette will get with a six-speed and the performance or axle. So let's get to work and head on our way. Well, the plan for today is it's tire day. We're going to be taking this car on a trip here in a couple of days, uh, probably a two to two and a half hour trip, and uh, we want to get good tires on the car. As I said, these were old tires, uh, very old, uh, well over 10 years old, so they're way out of date and just not safe to, to be on it at today's highway speeds. So anyway, we're going to take these off, and I like, I like taking these off and taking them to the installer uh, so you can get a good look at the brakes and everything else. And on these, on these C5 Corvettes, they're so low to the ground that many shops, uh, even with kind of a rotary brand four-post lift or a two-post lift, uh, the arms will not fit under here. So uh, on a C5 Corvette, it's just my preference to, to take the wheels off myself, clean them, inspect everything, and then take them to the installer. And there's a couple of different ways you can jack up a C5. Uh, I use one of these, and this is the inexpensive uh, Pittsburgh race jack, but it works really well and it fits underneath this, uh, this rear cross member. And then I just drop it quickly on some jack stands to get the weight off the center of it and make sure it's safe. And then we can pull the wheels and take them down to our installer. So we got our tires off and uh, surprise here, there's a nail uh, right here in, in, in this tire, which I did not know about. So it's always good to take them off, inspect them, check for any uneven wear to see if you've got any any trouble in the rear end and the alignment and these seem to be wearing just perfectly fine and also if you look at the outside compared to the inside of these tires you don't realize how wide this rim is this is a you can see the depth of it here this is a, a, a from b to b the 10 inch wide rim and we got our new tires right here and i got them from simple tire i've never dealt with simple tire before and uh gave me a great price uh free shipping and they came in two days so uh check out simple tire if you're if you're in the in the market for uh, some new shoes and we went with the uh bf goodrich comp 2 as uh, i probably wouldn't always put on a uh an all season tire but we are going to drive this car in all seasons and they match the ones that are on the front so if you, i want matching tires so i just went ahead with these and they've got a very very good uh, tread wear rating also we've got a TPS tire pressure sensor uh, that is out and I got one from tire rack and this is it right here these c5 Corvettes can be a little tricky on programming of the, the TPS's and uh, this is a 315 megahertz and they just screw on through the valve stem right here so we're gonna take our TPS with us we're gonna mark the wheel where it goes in and uh, hopefully that'll correct our, our TPS error and since these are directional tires, I marked this left rear and the other one right rear, and I put on here TPS so they know which one to put the TPS on. Lastly, I cleaned up these rims inside and out. Uh, you know, when the guys are working on things, you want to give them something clean to work on. Nobody wants to touch a greasy, grimy, brake dust-filled wheel. So we got them cleaned up and ready for the guys to handle. So I've got a tonneau cover on this truck. A little trick I like to do to get things in and out, because you've got tires way up in there, you just get an old doormat, one of these walk-off doormats, put everything on it, you grab it, slides right out. 
So we're here at the shop and you can just look how clean this place is. It's clean like a hospital. And uh, one of the things that you can't do with a C5 Corvette is we tried to put a, a, a fuel filter on it and, and you can't even get over the, uh, uh, the rails here of the pit uh, to do that, much less get these arms under uh, from your uh, from your rotary lift so we couldn't get the arms under we couldn't drive it over the pit here so uh, these kind of things you just kind of have to do at home with jacks and jack stands all right we got our new tires on mounted the guys did a great great job on it and one of the things I like to do is you just, you just take the sticker off of these things for a matter of record keeping you fold it in half just like this and then you got it and you just put it in your glove box and then you'll have a uh, and you can put the date on there whatever you want and just have a record of, of what you got and when you got it all right, so we're just getting ready to leave. We're here in South Carolina. We're going to travel to Charlotte, North Carolina, kind of make a, a, a loop around. It's going to be probably about five hours of driving. We're going to fill up the C5 with non-ethanol fuel, and we'll be back at this QT tonight to fill up again and just see what kind of fuel economy we get. All right, so we're here fueling up at the QT for $4.49 a gallon of non-ethanol. That's the only thing I usually use in here is non-ethanol. So we're going to fill it up till it clicks off one time, and then we're going to come back at the end of the day after our trip and fill it up again and see what kind of fuel economy we get. All right, so C5 is running. We're full of gas over here, and we're going to reset our trip to zero and hit the road. Other thing we're going to do is we're going to reset our... Uh, uh, we're going to fuel here and reset our average uh, just so we can see what the average on the uh, the computer calculator or whatever it is comes out to be compared to what our actual on paper fuel economy comes out to be. So we're taking a few back roads here so we can run about 65 miles an hour. Uh, nice new pavement here on this road and you can see that we're we're moving along at about uh, 64 miles an hour and turning really only about uh, 13, 1400 RPM. So that's where our that's where our fuel economy is going to come from. You know, as we run along here, you might have seen our temperature is holding steady at 180 degrees. When I put the water pump thermostat housing on there, uh, I changed the factory thermostat to a 180 degree thermostat. Uh, this car was running in the 200s. Uh, as far as coolant temperature and to me that's just a little bit warm uh, I don't know if this is going to help us or hurt us but uh, she's running steady at 180 there's enough airflow coming through from underneath uh, from the intake of the, of the radiator to hold this car at 180 so uh, we're going to see how that plays into our fuel economy as well so we're definitely here in the uh, queen city of Charlotte uh, the Charlotte skyline if you look right to our left here we've got the uh, Bank of America Stadium, home of the Carolina Panthers. So uh, we are here and we're going to make a quick stop off uh, someplace interesting in just a minute. All right, so we made it here. We're in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, the Queen City, home of NASCAR. If you're a car guy, uh, all kinds of things to see and do here with the race shops, the tracks, uh, the, the, the NASCAR Hall of Fame Museum and also uh, collector cars. Uh, we've got uh, Gateway, street side, all kinds of mega uh, collector car uh, areas to shop at. And but what, where we are, and if you're a NASCAR person, and uh, of course you're familiar with Rick Hendrick, and maybe you've seen the movie Days of Thunder, uh, we're here at City Chevrolet, uh, historic City Chevrolet. This place has been around uh, since I was a kid. We used to come here and my dad would buy Chevrolets. So we're here at Rick Hendrick City Chevrolet. We'll just take a quick look around and uh, kind of see what they got. But this place has been here with the same sign uh, probably since the 60s. And outside of here we've got reserved parking for uh, one important guy and it says do not uh, do not park here and that is for uh, Mr. H himself. All right, there's always something interesting in the showroom of City Chevrolet, and you never know what you're going to find. Um, I've got my good buddy Taylor Earnhardt here, actually of the Earnhardt family, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, we got two special Corvettes here, uh, and of course we got the new uh, uh, C8s down there and so forth. But tell us about this 64 right here, Taylor. So this 64 Corvette was the first Corvette sold here, uh, here at City Chevrolet. Uh, Mr. Hendrick went out and actually found it, uh, got it completely restored, um, and has it here on display. 
Uh, got it out of his museum to put it here on display. Been on display here for about two years now. All right, 64. First Corvette ever sold right here at City Chevrolet. Might have sat right here in this exact spot in the showroom. The showroom is almost exactly the same. I remember even when I was a kid, it's still the same showroom, updated a little bit. Uh, Taylor, tell us a little bit about the, the Grand Sport uh, C7 here. So this is a 40th anniversary Grand Sport C7. Um, it is, was a pace car at one point, but now, um, again, from the museum, Mr. Hendricks uh, sits on our showroom floor, been sitting for about two years. It actually, if you see, does have all the uh, Hendrick Motorsports signature on it, um, as well as some of the racers as well. So two great Corvettes here at City Chevrolet, and like I said, there's a lot of attractions here in Charlotte with the home of NASCAR and so forth, but if you're in town, uh, do yourself a favor, stop by City Chevrolet, a very uh, historic and iconic place, and uh, good folks like Taylor here, Taylor Earnhardt and others can help you out, give you a little tour around. Uh, so anyway, that's going to that's gonna do it for us here uh, at City Chevrolet. We might take a look in the service department real quick and uh, be on our way. And you know this dealership really isn't a, a NASCAR showroom, but there's always something here. So we've got our, our Terry Labonte 1996 Winston Cup Series Championship trophy right here. Texas Terry from Corpus Christi, Texas. You've got uh, Jimmy Johnson's Nextel. I don't know if you can see from the reflections, but it's Nextel 2007 Championship uh, trophy right here. Some other awards and things for the dealership. And of course, back down to the Winston Cup Series. Who else but... Jeff Gordon, the number 24 DuPont Chevrolet. That's Jeff Gordon's Winston Cup trophy from 1995. So some really neat things here. And, and there's, here's an old old picture from a Hendrick Chevrolet back in the day right here, not even not too long ago, but probably in the um, the 90s to early 2000s. And, you know, still the same dealership. You can see the, you know, right here, the, the old sign still there, uh, which I remember from a kid uh, back in the, in the 70s. So anyway, really neat things here at, at City Chevrolet. Stop by. Uh, you'll 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 be impressed and we're back here in the service here and we talked about days of thunder in City Chevrolet well you know there it is right there in Daytona City Chevrolet City Chevrolet right there at the days of thunder cars and if you look over here uh, here's Cole's trickles car up on the wall from the days of thunder and the 19 uh, and the 88 uh, Dale Jr. car so anyway that's it so that's back here in the service area and, and some very unique things uh, uh, from Days of Thunder. So that's going to do it for us here at uh, City Chevrolet. Take care and uh, we're back on the road. Alright, so it's 4.42, it's almost 5 o'clock and uh, we're we are exiting the Queen City, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. We're on the road. We've got some bad weather coming, so we're going to hammer down and uh, see if we can't get back home and back to the QT uh, before the bottom really falls out. So we've got a couple hours more to go, and uh, we'll see you at the QT. Well, we're still hammering down here. Uh, probably got another little more than an hour to go, and the weather the weather's changed on us. Uh, we have got... Uh, some showers moving in and I think they're going to stick around for a while. Uh, might be kind of bad at times. I just checked the kind of the radar here and uh, but we're going to stay, keep hammered down and uh, get to the QT and check our fuel economy for the day. So uh, stay tuned. We should be at the QT next. All right, we're back here at the QT right where we started early this morning. We had a great trip. The car ran beautifully. Uh, the weather started out nice and sunny and then we got into some rain and showers, but we're going to refill this car here. Uh, with non-ethanol and uh, let it click one time and then we're going to do our math and see what kind of fuel economy we got. All right, so it has clicked off one click and we've got 6.811 gallons. All right, we are back full of fuel. Uh, let's check our fuel economy right here and see what it says. We know we've got 6.811 gallons to fill it up. So we'll go to our uh, our fuel here, and it says our average is 34.0 miles per gallon. Uh, I'm not sure that I believe that. Uh, so anyway, let's go to our trip meter. So our trip is 212. We went 212 miles. So 212 mile round trip. Let's get our calculator out and do the calculator, do the math, and see exactly what our miles per gallon are as compared to what the trip meter or the trip calculation miles per gallon says. Okay, so let's do our math here. So we've got 212, 212, 212 miles divided by 6.811 gallons. 
212 miles divided by 6.81 gallons equals 31.126 miles per gallon. So we got, honestly, 31.1 miles to gallon per the gallon. Now, that right there uh, makes the C5 Corvette with a 5.7 liter, 350 cubic inch V8 and a six speed. And this car has the performance axle ratio, so that would diminish the mileage a little bit. But anyway, this is indeed, in my opinion, not only a performance car, but it's also an economy car. So that's our upload for today. Thank you for joining us. And if you like classic cars, boats, trucks, airplanes, subscribe to Classic Performance because we'll be back with more excitement. Have a great day.